Hello everyone. In this set of videos we are going to be analyzing algorithms that have loops as their primary feature and to analyze those we are going to be learning a lot about summations. Hopefully most of that will be review from last semester. So to begin analyzing this first we need to identify what is the cost of one iteration of the four loops we have in this problem. The cost of one iteration is just constant because we're just doing basic arithmetic there. And then we can express the total cost of running every single iteration of those summations, of sorry, of those for loops in terms of summations. So let us write that down. We could write t of n, that's our runtime as a function of n, as the sum from i equals 1 to n, and then the sum from j equals 1 to radical i of the cost of one iteration, which is c. Now, what we're going to do is just begin algebra and see where it goes. That inner summation can be simplified to become c times radical i. And then unfortunately, we do not have a nice formula for adding up the summation of a bunch of radicals. So we're going to need to bound this above and bound it below and use our definitions of big O and big omega to understand what the complexity here is. So let's get to it. I'm going to bound this above. And I'll do that in red here. If you remember, our trick for bounding above is we replace every term of the summation with the largest term appearing in the summation. So here, I, what I've done is taken the original sum and, which was c radical i, and replaced it with radical n. By doing that, I've replaced all of the smaller terms, like radical 1, radical 2, radical 3, with the biggest term, radical n. Now, we're adding up a fixed thing, c radical i, a fixed number of times, n times. And we get n copies of c radical n, which all of this tells us that we are in big O of n to the 3 halves. Now hopefully we can show we're also in big omega of n to the 3 halves, and then we would be done. So let's do that here in purple. Bounding below is usually less enjoyable because when we're trying to bound below, we don't have an easy way of making the series smaller in a convenient way. So our trick is we split the summation in half first. So instead of going from 1 to n, we go from 1 to n over 2, and then we include the rest of the terms from n over 2 plus 1 to n of c radical i. Some of the time we might need to be careful here because n might not be even, so n over 2 might, might not make sense for a top or bottom bound of the summation, but we're just going to ignore that because it's not going to really affect anything. If we then make it smaller after we split it in half, we're just going to drop the first summation entirely and keep the second half there. And while doing that, we will also make, substitute something inside of the summation to make it term by term smaller. Every term in that second summation goes from n over 2 plus 1 to n over 2 plus 2 to n over 2 plus 3, all the way up until n. Something that is definitely smaller than all of those would be n over 2. So if I replace i in the summation with n over 2, I've made it term by term smaller, therefore making the entire summation smaller. Now, the number of terms in that summation is the top bound minus the bottom bound plus 1 times the thing inside of the summation. And if we collect together all of our like terms, we have n minus n over 2, that's n over 2. And we get some sweet cancellation of the plus 1 and the minus 1 in a way that makes me happy. So we have n over 2 times c radical n over 2. And our constant here is uglier, but all of this stuff here in purple says that it is in omega of n to the 3 halves. So that summation is in big O of n to the 3 halves. It is in big omega of n to the 3 halves. Therefore, it must be in big theta of n to the 3 halves. So our final conclusion would be... So t of n is in 
theta of n. 